This video is sponsored by Incogni, the simple solution to protecting your personal data. Check out the link in the description to get 60% off an annual Incogni plan or stay tuned to learn more. Germany is a nation of automakers, and with Stuttgart being home to both Porsche and Mercedes-Benz, you could say it's a city of cars. But since this is Germany, Stuttgart also has an incredibly impressive rail transit system, composed of a mind-bendingly complex Stadtbahn system, a surprisingly extensive S-Bahn network, and a few other special railways to top things off. And today, we're going to explain all of them. I have personal family roots in Stuttgart, so I am particularly excited for this one. Let's dive in. If you haven't seen my explainers of other German transit networks in Berlin, Munich, and Hamburg, make sure to check out the playlist in the top right corner. And make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss future videos on cities from Frankfurt to Kuala Lumpur. Stuttgart is located along the Neckar River in southwestern Germany, roughly equidistant from Frankfurt, Nuremberg, and Munich. The city proper has a little more than half a million people, but the surrounding region, made up mostly of surrounding cities and towns, brings the population up close to 3 million. The central part of Stuttgart is nestled within a valley located west of the river, surrounded by forested hills with the Stubb and Stuttgart main station, which we'll get to later serving as the main focal point. As mentioned before, both Mercedes and Porsche have their headquarters in the city. Mercedes just northeast of downtown along the Neckar River, and Porsche to the north of the city. The Mercedes headquarters is specifically located just southeast of the Neckar Park area, which plays host to a number of sports fields, as well as the carmaker's namesake arenas. The enormous Konstanter Wassen Festival grounds are directly next to these arenas, which play host to Germany's second biggest beer festival. I should also mention that both of the automakers' headquarters are not just offices, but also a number of massive automotive production and testing facilities, which employ huge numbers of locals who often arrive on public transit. Just to the west of the Neckar Park and the river is the enormous Rosenstein Park, as well as the Wilhelma Botanical Garden and Zoo, which form a giant green space for central Stuttgart, surrounding the approach tracks and rail yard for Stuttgart Main Station, which is symbolic of Stuttgart itself, a city with lots of green and lots of railways and industry. Stuttgart has a rather small international airport, located to the south of the city beyond the hills, with a single large runway accommodating mostly continental flights. While the airport is rather humble, the massive Stuttgart Messe, a giant convention center built directly adjacent to the airfield in the early 2010s, steals the show and eclipses not only the airport, but also many convention centers of much bigger cities around the world. The rail network of Stuttgart is largely divided between its Stadtbahn surface subway system, the first we're covering in a German city explainer, and the S-Bahn network, which we'll dive into first. Like most major German cities, Stuttgart has an extensive S-Bahn network, with trains serving suburbs and outlying towns in all directions, with a total of 83 stations on over 200 kilometers of track. The core of the network is the Verbindungsbahn, the central tunnel that connects the underground S-Bahn platforms at Stuttgart Main Station, allowing S-Bahn trains alone to continue through the station without turning around, allowing them to serve four stations under Stuttgart's built-up urban core. The network has a total of eight different services, and all but one operate into the city center tunnel. S1 begins in the southeast and follows the river all the way up to the Neckar Park, where it serves a station a short walk from the various sports venues and festival grounds, as well as the Mercedes-Benz Museum. There's actually also an extra event service called S11 that runs through the core of the city and terminates here. The line then serves Bad Cannstatt, a major station east of the Neckar, before crossing the river on a bridge and passing under the Rosenstein Park in a tunnel. From here, S1 passes through central Stuttgart before surfacing and continuing west towards the Black Forest to terminate. S2 also begins in the southeast and heads northwest and west to merge with the S1 just southeast of Bad Cannstatt, before continuing through the center. Just south of Horst Station, the S2 diverges from S1 and heads southeast towards the airport and Mesa, which it serves with an underground station before terminating just one stop further to the south. S3 runs from the east of the city westwards, merging with S2 just west of Weiblingen Station, which both lines service, before continuing alongside S2 to the airport and Mesa, where its services terminate. All other S-Bahn services operate into the city center tunnel as well, but instead of traversing it completely, these services turn around using a stationless loop of track located west of Schwabstrasse Station. This loop allows westbound trains to continue back east without the driver walking to the other end of the train or having to have the train stop and reverse. S4 starts in the city center and continues east, and then north to Stuttgart North Station and beyond, before diverging to the east, serving a number of small towns before crossing the Neckar and following one of its tributaries to the eastern terminus of S3. 
S5 follows the same route as S4, but diverges to the west rather than the east north of Ludwigsburg, and then terminates a few stops to the north. The final routes S6 and S60 diverge westwards from S4 and S5 north of Zuffenhausen, and then serve a station at Porsche's headquarters and museum, before continuing west-northwest to serve a number of towns. At Renningen, S6 continues west two stops before terminating, while S60 diverges to the south. The service continues running south all the way to Bablingen on S1 where it terminates, connecting the Sindelfingen area on the way, with the namesake station being directly connected to a massive Mercedes factory that measures almost 2 kilometers across. S6 and S60 share slots into central Stuttgart and thus run at half the frequency of other routes. And there is actually one additional limited stop service known as S62, though it doesn't actually serve the city center, instead it connects the terminal of S6 with Zuffenhausen. All in all, the Stuttgart S-Bahn is fairly prototypical, with its city center tunnel and many services. However, I will say the long tails on the lines that loop back to connect to other lines reminds me more of the Zurich S-Bahn than of other German systems. What the Stuttgart S-Bahn does have in common with its German siblings is its rolling stock, a large part of which is comprised of the DB Class 423, a standard, standard gauge S-Bahn train that runs on 15 kV overhead power and is also used in Munich and other German cities. The Class 423 sets consist of four car walkthrough units with Jacob's bogies between the cars, and can be combined into sets of up to three to form a roughly 200 meter consist of three meter wide cars. Stuttgart also operates the newer Class 430 trains, which are essentially the successor to the Class 423 that were introduced over two decades ago, with an identical top speed of 140 km per hour, identical traction configuration, and as with the Class 423 were also manufactured by Bombardier and Alstom. One notable difference though is the built-in extendable running boards, designed to help bridge the gap on Stuttgart's many curved S-Bahn stops. These running boards were problematic at first, then had to be deactivated for a time, but now they're working reliably in regular service. Service frequency on the Stuttgart S-Bahn is quite good, with each service operating every 15 minutes during the busiest periods, every half hour during the rest of the day, and hourly in the early morning as well as overnight on the weekends, and before holidays. In practice, this means that the airport, Weiblingen, Ludwigsburg, and Renningen all see all-day 15-minute service, while Rohr, Bad Cannstatt, and Zuffenhausen get even more service. All of this service results in 24 trains per hour or a train every 2.5 minutes or so during peak periods in the central core of the network, not so far off of Munich. Now, I, like what I assume are most of you, spend a large chunk of my day on the internet, either doing a lot of reading up on transit systems around the world, or talking to like-minded, and sometimes not so like-minded, people on social media. And through regular usage of the internet, and having to dive through a lot of sketchy websites for research, my personal information is constantly being collected, purchased, and sold to data brokers, including my phone number, they constantly get spammed, with phone calls definitely from the tax authorities, and other personal information that I don't want to float around the internet. But this is soon going to change because of Incogni. By simply creating an account and giving Incogni the permission to do so, they can find all of the data brokers that have my information and request its removal. And they follow up on these requests to ensure objections from data brokers are dealt with and the whole process is followed through. Since creating an account with Incogni three months ago, I've already got my information removed from 25 different brokers, and they're still following up with more than a dozen of them. Incogni knows all about the different kinds of data brokers that might have information on me, such as marketing data brokers that collect data on my browsing habits in order to sell me things, or financial information brokers that keep tabs on where all of my money is, and it's able to protect me against all of these. Incogni also ensures your personal data stays off the market by doing recurring automated removals so that you can stay safe throughout the duration of your plan. And best of all, everything is automated, so there's no need to check in or do any manual interventions, you just need to watch it go to work. Use the code RMTRANSIT at the link in the description to get an exclusive 60% off an annual Incogni plan, and everything is risk-free with Incogni's 30-day refund policy. Make sure to use my code RMTRANSIT so you directly support the channel. Now, on top of the S-Bahn, Stuttgart also has an impressively extensive stop bond system, which has over 200 stops and stations, and over 120 kilometers of track. The stop bond system was built out of a very impressive coordinated effort in the mid-20th century to modernize Stuttgart's existing meter gauge tram network, with new city center tunnels and dedicated tracks, as well as a conversion to standard gauge over several decades. Because of this gradual transition, many remnants of the old tram network are still visible, and the SSB, the transit agency that runs the Stadtbahn and the bus network, still maintains a decent amount of dual-gauge track simply for Sunday Heritage tram operations. 
and there are even a few loops that have stuck around built only with meter gauge track as Stuttgart's old trams were one directional. While Stuttgart ultimately decided against the construction of a proper U-Bahn network, it still adorns its stops with the same U used in other parts of Germany, albeit standing for independent in German as opposed to underground because of its mostly dedicated higher quality infrastructure. Although that often just means ballasted track in the middle of the street, and there are even sections where the rails are in mixed traffic. Truly the only constant in Stuttgart's Stadtbahn is inconsistency, which is why this video is so long. Some stations are large underground facilities, while others are staggered tram stops. Some sections of track at suburban railway-like dedicated right-of-ways with crossing gates, while others mingle with traffic. What is notable is the careful planning of the system. While there are a lot of tunnels, underground stations seem to be thoughtfully avoided, likely to keep costs in check. The system also serves the city well beyond the urban core, and in that regard it should be a model for light rail systems the world over, with routes running entirely in the suburbs and from suburb to suburb. The result of all of these decisions is a much bigger, but more dispersed and diverse urban rail rapid transit system than most German cities. The modern trains on the Stuttgart Stadtbahn, collectively referred to as the DT8, really are more like subway cars than those used for tramways, and have been built by Dueg, Siemens, Bombardier, and most recently Stadler. Despite still being fairly narrow, at 2.65 meters wide, the trains, which all have a very similar design, have a wide 50 meter turning radius, and each unit is composed of two cars, each with two bogies and two doors per side. The first generation trains were not walked through, while the later generations are. On select routes, two 40 meter long units can be mated into an 80 meter train, and with a platform height of 1 meter, I'd consider these to be high floor cars, and they certainly are quite spacious inside with a fully flat floor. A really nice touch is that when planning many underground stations, platforms were built to 120 meters to enable quite large six-car trains to eventually be used, which alongside more doors and frequency could turn the system into a proper metro someday, even if only in select sections. Now I'm going to go through the lines in detail, however because of the construction of the massive Stuttgart 21 project, some sections of the system are operating unusually because of track closures, and the service pattern will change again in the future. That being said, you should still get a very good sense for the fundamental network layout and infrastructure, and I'll highlight the sections of track which are closed at the end. Because the network is so complex, I'm going to break it down by starting with the main radial corridors, which I'll identify with letters. Afterwards, I'll talk about the services that operate. These main corridors seem more service operating, and because of this they tend to have more separation from roads with great separations, tunnels, and more. Although there are some sections of the network that see high frequency services running over tram style infrastructure. Truly the only thing that is consistent is that nothing is consistent. The center of the Stadtbahn system today is Charlottenplatz, which is a two level underground interchange about a kilometer south of Stuttgart main station. From here, trains head out in all directions. Trains to the south quickly emerge from underground and run along a street before either turning east and running up a hill on the surface along a former tram alignment, which is now a mixed gauge heritage line, or continuing south and diving into a tunnel under the hills. This complex tunnel has an underground flying junction, allowing trains to head either directly south onto what I'll call Line A or southwest onto Line B. Line A winds its way southeast to an outlying town on a route consisting almost entirely of off-street operation and tunnels. Meanwhile the B branch heads southwest, entirely off-street in a railway style right-of-way, with a B1 branch that diverges to the southwest early, and a B2 branch which terminates one stop north of Rohr on the S1, S2, and S3 routes. To be perfectly honest, these routes to the south of the city feel a lot like traditional suburban rail. Trains to the west continue underground to Rathaus, which is followed by an underground, fully grade separated Y that allows trains to continue straight to Line C or diverge to the north on Line D. Line C runs a few more stops underground before popping above ground and running at grade through a valley to the end of Line B. This section of tracks really highlights how chaotic the Stuttgart stop on often is, with portions of track being half green and half ballasted, part operating on what feels like a rail right of way, and still more sections operating in mixed traffic. There's even one section of mixed traffic running where half the street just turns into ballasted track and traffic heading in the other direction runs on a paved section of track that then crosses over the ballasted bit with a level crossing. Utter chaos. Heading back to Rathaus, Line D runs underground for one stop, before popping out onto the surface and turning west and running down the middle of a street, before passing under a ridge and serving a few stops on the other side. From Charlottenplatz, trains to the north continue in a tunnel via Schlossplatz station to the underground platforms at Stuttgart main station, and then beyond to one more underground station before surfacing. The tracks then run in the middle of a wide boulevard with few crossings where a branch line splits off to serve the Kilsberg Park 
before the main line dives back underground to arrive at the trenched Prague Saddle Station, which actually has Spanish Solution platforms. Beyond the station, the line splits into two. Line E heads west and serves another underground station before popping above ground for a station which connects to S4, S5, S6, and S60 before turning west and going underground once again to serve Wilhelm Geigerplatz, which is underground but with a tiny opening to above, before once again popping above ground to serve a few more surface stations. To the north of Prague Sattel, Line F diverges from Line E by way of an underground flying junction before popping above ground to run in the middle of a wide boulevard for several stops. Finally, we have the lines that travel east from Charlottenplatz. At first, the tracks remain underground to serve two stations before popping above ground and running down the middle of a street, and then passing directly by the Rosenstein Park on the surface. Beyond the station Mineral Bader, Line G diverges to the north with a flat junction and a stop serving the Botanical Garden and Zoo, before continuing to the western shore of the Neckar. Line H continues east into the middle of a wide road bridge crossing the Neckar and arrives at Bad Cannstatt Station, where connection can be made to S1, S2, and S3, as well as a host of other regional trains, before it diverges east to once again run down the center of a street. The final line, Line I, actually diverges from lines G and H further west just beyond Stoka Station, before heading southeast paralleling the river and splitting in two with the I-1 branch heading across the river in the middle of a road bridge to connect with an S-1 station, and the I-2 branch heading further along the river in the middle of a roadway. What's interesting to note about the core routes of the Stopbahn network is that they manage to intercept every single S-Bahn service before it reaches the city centre, providing additional redundancy and capacity across the entire region. With the network core out of the way, let's look at each service. Since there's quite a few, we will move quickly, and since basically all services can be divided into primarily east-west or north-south, I've divided them as such. Let's start with the east-west routes. U1 starts at the end of line B and C, and runs along the length of line C and line H before continuing further east and connecting with S2 and S3. U2 runs from the end of line D east to Charlottenplatz, before continuing east along line H, splitting off from it at Bad Konstadt, before continuing northeast to its terminus. The end of the U2, like a lot of Stadtbahn lines in Stuttgart, narrows to one track before fanning into two terminal platforms, reducing the number of switches needed. U3 is a short tangential line that starts at its western end at the terminus of lines B and C, and runs east on line B, before diverging to the southeast to run off street through residential areas and then a forest and farm fields, before terminating at an outlying town. U4 starts in the north of central Stuttgart, off of a main corridor as an urban tram, running to the south and picking up line D after passing through Charlottenplatz onto line I's branch crossing the Neckar. U8, like U3, is tangential, and also starts at the terminus of lines B and C, and runs east on line B to line A, which it runs to the end of. U8 only runs on weekdays, as its route is fully redundant with other Stadtbahn services. U9 starts at its western end along line C, and picks up line I after Charlottenplatz, albeit taking a slightly different northern route along it than U4, before recombining and then diverting onto the southeastern branch along the river. U11, like S11, is a special event service for events at the Neckar Park. It starts at a second set of stop-on platforms at Stuttgart Main Station, which are a stub while Stuttgart 21 is being constructed, and travels west to Berliner Platz, the point where the U4 splits from line D. Berliner Platz actually has two stations and a number of different platforms on either side of the intersection, allowing different lines to stop there, a pattern that repeats in a few places across the city. From Berliner Platz, U11 takes line D and then line GH before diverging after Mercedesstrasse to the southeast to a stop at the opposite side of the Neckar Park from the S-Bahn. U13 is a northern tangential service, and it starts at the terminus of line E and continues to the branch with line F, but rather than heading into the city, the line continues southeast to serve the Rosenstein Park and connect onto lines G and H, which it continues along to its terminus, then turning south to connect to S1 and line I1, which it follows across the Neckar all the way to the end of the I2 branch. U13 is probably my favorite service given its orbital route and how it skips between several main corridors. And with that, we turn to the north-south services. U5 starts at its northern end north of central Stuttgart off a main corridor, before merging onto line EF and then running to line B1, which it travels beyond to connect with S2 and S3. U6 starts at its northern end northwest of Stuttgart in the town of Gerlingen, and travels eastwards to connect onto line E, before following the same route as U5 to line B1, where it diverges to the south to connect to the S-Bahn at the Messe Airport Station. U7 starts at its northern end, northeast of Stuttgart near the Neckar River in Monchfeld, running westwards to connect to line F, running through the city and then to the end of line A in the neighboring city of Ostfeldern. 
U-12 also starts its northern end northeast of central Stuttgart, in the town of Remsek, and heads west towards the center on its own route, which intersects with U-13 north of the Rosenstein Park, before the route picks up line EF and runs through the center to line B-2, which it diverges off of to the southwest. U-14 starts at its northern end in the north of Stuttgart, off a main line along U-12, before heading southwest earlier than its partner line. U-14 then runs along Line G to Charlottenplatz, before turning onto Line D and diverting into the stub end platforms at Stuttgart Main Station. U-15 starts at its northern end in the north of Stuttgart off a of main line, before joining Line F and running through to Line A. In the middle of this, Line U-15 follows a mixed traffic and mixed gauge alignment up the hillside rather than taking the tunnel-filled route that the other Line A services follow before picking the main part of Line A back up on the other side of the hill near the TV tower, which it terminates along at the city border. As I mentioned earlier, one set of stop on platforms at Stuttgart Main Station is currently a stub end route, but that was not always the case. There was historically actually a tunnel between Stotts Gallery Station and this set of tracks headed from the northwest into the main station. However, this tunnel needed to be reconstructed to accommodate Stuttgart 21 happening in the same area, and so for the time being, services have been adjusted, with U14 looping around to the Hauptbahnhof platforms and U9 bypassing them entirely. In order to provide supplemental service while these reroutings are in place, two new routes called U29 and U34 have been put into service, with U29 providing capacity from Stuttgart Main Station to the end of Line D, and U34 running from midway along Line D to the end of Line C. Stepping back, I hope you can see the incredible complexity of the Stuttgart Stadtbahn, with its core radial routes, numerous tangential corridors, and many branches connecting all across the city. In a lot of ways, this rather chaotic layout with so many service patterns reminds me again of Zurich. However, unlike in Zurich, each service on Stuttgart's system tends to run quite frequently, at every 10 minutes or so, with off-peak service falling further to around every 15 minutes. That being said, as with any network with so much interlining, actual frequencies on the core routes, those I provided with letters, are every 5 minutes or better much of the time, and at worst, still better than every 10 minutes. Now, beyond the Stadtbahn, there are two more lines which provide a frequent local service in Stuttgart and which have numbers like Stadtbahn lines. The first of these is Line 10, which is one of the only urban rack railways in the world. You can learn more about another famous one up here. Line 10 runs 2 kilometers up a hillside between Line C and Line B, with a passing loop in the middle. To make things more interesting, the line first ran in 1884 using steam locomotives, still uses meter gauge, and has a special short rack that allows it to operate on street for part of its route. It also has a very cool bike trailer which you might have seen floating around on the internet. I would love to see more creative solutions like this all across the world. The second is Line 20, which is a funicular dating back to 1929 that still uses the original wooden cars and meter gauge and runs half a kilometer from U1 up to a prominent cemetery in the forest, earning it the nickname Inheritance Hunter Express among locals. As with any great transit city, Stuttgart has significant plans for the future, many of which started in the past. The Stuttgart Stadtbahn is a masterclass in planning, and in this case planning ahead. The network is rife with extra platforms, tunnels, and junction boxes lying in wait to be connected to future infrastructure. The city is an exemplar in future-proofing and keeping options open for network expansion, something that I talked about a bit in my future-proof transit video. That significant core capacity that the Stadtbahn has built up over the decades means lots of room for more service, and that means minor extensions are being planned to the network all over the place. The same can be said for the S-Bahn system, which has a number of extensions planned and which will be getting a new infill station between Stuttgart Main Station and Bad Cannstatt to serve a new district that will be replacing the old above-ground rail yard in the course of the Stuttgart 21 redevelopment project. Stuttgart 21, which we've mentioned several times so far, is the largest railway project in Germany, and also the most expensive, with a likely cost in excess of 10 billion euros when it's complete. The project has been full of cost overruns and delays, so what exactly is it? While Stuttgart 21 will replace the current stub and Stuttgart main station with a new four island platform underground through station with four large approach tunnels feeding into it via flying junctions at either end. The construction of the upgraded station is frankly incredibly impressive, as the new platforms are actually quite shallow. Buildings in the historic city center have been placed on stilts in many places so that the station could be constructed underneath. Unsurprisingly, however, Stuttgart 21 is extremely controversial, though often for different reasons among different groups of people. One of the significant publicized problems with the project has been the removal of several hundred trees, but in a city as green as Stuttgart, removing trees for the construction of more electric railways seems like a pretty reasonable trade-off. The bigger problems are technical, and there are many, more than I can even get into in this video. 
For one, the design of the new station is kind of messy, with a significant gradient in the station tracks and platforms. There were also major modifications to, and the demolition of significant portions of the historically registered and protected Stuttgart main station for the project, which were unpopular for obvious reasons. The biggest problem with Stuttgart 21 though is that its design does not align with the planned future of rail service in Germany at large, and in particular in this part of southern Germany. Germany plans to transition to a fully clock-based scheduling system much like the system used in Switzerland by around 2070, and experts have cast doubt upon the new station's ability to accommodate this clock-based scheduling. With Germany planning this fundamental transition, the original stub and Stuttgart main station has a number of advantages over the new through tunnels, which would be a reasonable approach for an RER system but doesn't mesh well with the clock-based national and international service plan to use them, which is really one of the biggest mistakes that can be made in transit planning. It's worth noting that Zurich still has a large stub end station in the country that originated the clock-based scheduling national timetable approach. And in that, Stuttgart 21 is like California High Speed Rail, a project which has worthwhile and noble objectives, more modern facilities, and higher capacity, but which has been executed in a way that actually makes meeting those objectives incredibly hard. Fortunately though, Stuttgart doesn't need Stuttgart 21 to put it on the transit map. With its incredible stop-on system and solid S-Bonds, Stuttgart already punches far above its weight for its railway networks. Thanks for watching.